Think about the last time you felt great when you were in the audience listening to someone speak. Maybe it was a meeting, a presentation, or even a simple conversation that left a powerful impression on you. What made it so unforgettable? It wasn't just the information, data, or facts that were shared. It was the emotion behind the message. Emotions are the secret ingredient that can powerfully increase your communication from mundane to amazingly memorable. Welcome to part four of my aimed series on business communication skills. Yes, the E in my aimed framework stands for emotion. What emotion do you want your audience to feel? Today, I'm exploring the power of emotion and how you can use emotions to connect with your audience on a deeper level. Because ultimately, it's not just about what you say, but how you make your audience feel that makes all the difference. Part four of my AIM series really begins to put all the pieces together in the secret to great communication. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Grant, and I'm a business English confidence coach. For years, I've coached CEOs and business executives how to communicate confidently in English. A big part of this work has been helping my clients give great presentations. I developed my aimed framework to help them have a strategy to communicate at the highest level in the best way. These CEOs were not confident in English, and they were certainly not comfortable making presentations to anyone in English. But I helped them learn the secret. It was not about using great English. I showed them how they can have bad English and make great presentations. That's right. You don't need to have great English to give great presentations. Maybe you don't believe me. I know most every client I had did not believe me when I first told them this. But I will show you how to communicate powerfully, even if you have bad English. I showed them. and I will show you the secret. Let me review the previous three videos I made in the AIMED series. In part one of the AIM series, I showed you how the A in AIMED stands for audience, and that you need to know your audience and how you can relate to them. Taking the time to really understand why these specific people are in your audience is so important. It doesn't matter if it's one person or 200 people. You need to understand why they are here listening to you today. In part two of my AIM series, I explained that after you know who your audience is, that you need to understand that the I in AIM stands for I, 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 and that the presentation is not about you, but instead, it is about serving your audience. Focusing on your audience and relating to your audience will put you in the best position to communicate at a high level. In part three of my AIM series, I discussed that after you understand who your audience is and how important it is to make the presentation about your audience and not about I, 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 that you are now ready to focus on how the M in AIMED stands for message and how essential it is to understand what message this audience needs or wants. It is not about what you want to tell your audience. It's about finding out what your audience really needs or wants at this time from you because it's your responsibility to serve your audience. Let me show you the real secret to communication by planning what you want your audience to feel with the message you know they need or want. It is one thing to find the right message, but it is more important 
to get your audience to feel the right emotion from your talk. Honestly, in this aimed framework, I wanted to change the E for emotion to F for feel. But then I would end up with amphid, and uh, that just sounds crazy. So I changed it to an E for emotion, and now it spells aimed. The truth is that no one remembers what a speaker said in a presentation. They only really remember how the speaker made them feel. A great speaker is able to relate to the audience, to give them the message they need and get the audience to feel something from the presentation. This point was perfectly said by the legendary speaker and author, Maya Angelou, where she said this many years ago. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Let me give you an example of getting your audience to feel something for the message they need and want. One of my former clients is a CEO of a mid-sized 500-person company. He is a non-native English speaker, and his English skills are not great. His company was going through a lot of change with many new people joining the company, and they were developing big new products. One of the problems was that they had a big product, and most of the people had been working at this company and working on the current product for a long time. The CEO needed to give a yearly update of the company to all of his employees in English. He was never a good speaker in front of an audience in his native language. This presentation needed to be in English. So he was really not confident about this presentation. We went through my aimed framework to help him prepare for his presentation. We started with his audience. His audience was the full company, and they needed to be at this meeting. But when we dove deeper into his audience, we agreed that his audience was not the senior level management team. His audience really was the normal working people in the company that do not know everything about the company. This is the group he really needed to communicate with. His senior people already knew the details of the company's past results and future plans. Next, we needed to get him to make this talk about his audience and not about him and his company. This step is always difficult for most speakers because we have all been trained that the presentation is about I, I, I. He was able to put himself in his employee's shoes and we agreed that he would take three normal employees from his company and focus on explaining his message to those three employees, and not focusing on all 500 people. Next, I asked him to think about what message his audience really needs and wants at that specific time. Remember, a speaker's responsibility is to help their audience and serve them with what they need. After some thought, he knew that His employees did not fully understand what was happening with the future of the company. Many of them were worried about whether the company was healthy enough to think about creating a big new product, and they all wanted to know what was going to happen in the future. The truth is that most employees wanted to know if the company was healthy and if their job was safe in the future, or should they start looking for a new job. The message this audience needed and wanted was very clear at this time. Now it was time to plan what he wanted his audience to feel from the message he was serving them with. This was now easy because he really understood his audience and he knew exactly what message they needed and wanted. He wanted his audience to feel confident and feel proud of the company they are all a part of. When he gave his presentation, his whole focus was on making sure that everyone in his audience felt confident and proud. It 
worked. After his presentation, guess what most of his audience remembered? Yes, he gave some facts, statistics, and data during his presentation that helped explain his message. But his audience remembered that they felt so confident and so proud of the company they worked for. Your audience will always remember how you made them feel. So put emotion into messages to create the best messages for your audience. Let me go through the first four steps of my AIMED framework. A stands for audience. Who is your audience and how can you relate to them? I stands for I, I, I. It is not about you. It is about serving your audience. M stands for message. What message do they need or want? E stands for emotion. What emotion do you want your audience to feel? You see how well these steps work together to create great presentations and meetings and business communication? Stay tuned for part five of my AIMED framework. What do you think the D in AIMED stands for? <laughs> Please put your best guess into the comments below this video. I'm also very curious to hear your thoughts on the AIMED framework. Please like this video. Subscribe to the channel, share your comments, and I also invite you to learn your Business English Confidence Score. You'll find the link in the description below this video.